People who work high-end retail stores. How do you feel ringing someone up for an amount of money on luxury items that could pay your yearly salary? I had a guy come into a retail store that I worked at when I was younger and just told his two kids, get whatever the heck you want. I don't remember what their total was, but they brought everything to me so that I could get the full commission and the paycheck with that commission bump on it was higher than my tax return that year. I wrapped and boxed everything for them and offered to help them outside. They had probably an entire bell cart load of clothing, luggage sets, cologne, scarves, etc. The guy drove there in a freaking Ferrari California convertible which, yes technically it has a back seat, but it's about the size of a car seat for a 2 year old. He bought 2 luggage sets and like 200 pounds of clothing. What the frick, man. Your car is barely big enough to transport your 9 year old daughter so where did you think you were gonna put a 5 figure clothing purchase frick? Anyway, he got into a huff and called his ex-wife. He phrased it as, let me summon the wicked witch. She showed up with the Porsche SUV and they got into a verbal altercation about him calling during hot yoga so it all worked out okay. I worked in luxury fashion. I was amazed by how much some ladies would spend in my store, usually far more than I could afford. I noticed there was a very stable trend that women who spent a certain excessive amount, tens of thousands of dollars, were quite obnoxious throughout the shopping process, but the woman who spent a really astronomical amount, hundreds of thousands of dollars and were so polite, easy to work with, easy to work with, easy to work with, easy to work with, easy to work I always wondered about what line of work these women were in, especially the ones who paid with Amex black cards. Those things are heavy, but I was also happy because I made commission on every purchase. The first time I held a black card I assumed the guy was fricking with me because it was so heavy. I was like okay sir, very funny, I need your payment method now, and he actually had to convince me it was a real credit card. I felt so bad, I had to explain to him I'd never seen one before and he was thankfully really nice about it. I worked at a high end wine store. It is crazy because your client will just be casually talking to you. We had very good relations with our clients, would chat like we were their therapists, and then I'd be like okay your total is $15, 637.15 inches and they'd pass their card and conversation would just continue on like normal. It's nothing for them to drop that much, they don't even give it a pause. I picked up a Malbook yesterday from the $10 and under bin yesterday, so pretty much the same. Sometimes I feel nervous for them when they're obviously not concerned about the price. I'm like oh crap we aren't gonna be able to afford this. Maybe I should stop ringing and suggesting items. I'm on commission. I have to refrain from projecting how broke I am. I love the Wii. Like you've spent enough time assisting them that you're now solidly invested this stranger. I'm a personal loan officer. The amount of money some people make on a monthly basis is roughly 4-5 months of my income and they struggle to make ends meet sometimes. Living extravagantly is just something I cannot do. My vehicle cost a little more than median salary for one month. Not much feels better than no car payment. I make minimum wage in a candy store that sells expensive chocolates. People will drop $75-200 on chocolates without blinking. I live near a wealthy retirement community, and it always blows my mind. At Christmas the totals get unbelievably high. $800 of candy as gifts, with no hesitation. I think if it was anything else in the luxury category it would shock me a bit less, but that much just for chocolate feels wild. I know the amount I stated is low compared to the others in this thread, but again, that much for candy. I remember my friend spending $75 on a box of chocolates from Vosges, then his mom was just popping them into her mouth one after another. Once he told her the price she freaked out and slowed down. But yeah, we were normal college kids, they just have really great chocolate. High end travel agency. People spend my annual salary every day on some very nice trips. It's not hard either when you want first class flights and five everything. The worst part of the job is that this spending level becomes your new normal, thus you have to take care to remember that spending £30,000 on a two week trip to the states is not a reasonable price for most people. My parents went on a $60k luxury cruise for a month. I'd love to know what having that kind of money feels like, lol. I grew up rather poor but my mother remarried quite well. 
It's not people buying things that bothers me it's the stuff that gets binned or left in long forgotten stock rooms that hurts. I once left a very nice diadem in the room of requirement. I sometimes wonder whatever did become of it. CPA here. You get used to seeing people make great money as you prepare tax returns. The one that sticks out though was this guy who in year 1 made a little over $200k. No biggie really. I saw that all the time. Next year though $800k. Even that is only mildly impressive. But he was only 24. It was his second year out of college. That one smarted. Guessing sales. Upside could be stupid. Not me, but had a friend who worked at the LV on the Champs LSAs. He said that he always wondered what people's professions were when they were in there buying multiple items. He did enjoy some of the experiences. There were instances where they would close the store for celebrities and he got to assist their shopping. The strangest thing he said were the suits he was issued. I forget how many he had, but they were tailored LV suits. When he left, he had to turn them in, and they burned them. Oh man. I kinda get why they burned the suits but it sucks anyway. I worked for Chanel for a short stint. It blew my mind the first time someone dropped over 1k on makeup and skincare but after that, having anyone be okay with me saying your total today is 850 plus tax and then just hand their card over became completely normal it was scary. Anything I sold, I made a measly 2% commission but hey, it was extra cash in my pocket and it made me work harder for bigger sales. $20 is $20. I used to manage an electronics boutique before it was bought by GameStop. I worked in the suburbs where a bunch of pro athletes lived. We were pretty easy going with them so they enjoyed shopping with us regularly because they wouldn't draw attention and could just be customers. We were also honest with them and tried to steer them away from bad games. But it never mattered. Without fail, every two weeks I'd see the majority of them come in and buy one of every new PS2 game. Regardless of what it was, AAA titles, kids games, terrible games, they didn't care, one of everything new. I once had a player come in and buy a PS2 and one of every new game for about a dozen friends. I think the total bill was about $10k if I remember correctly. Till what EB Games stood for. Obligatory not in high end retail, but I used to work as a casino dealer. Seeing someone lose 100k in the space of about 10 minutes made me feel physically sick. She didn't bat an eyelid, called her husband for another 100k and proceeded to lose that too then made us put the game on hold while she pleaded with husband over the phone for more money and left in a strop when he refused. I think I would throw up if I witnessed that. It made me question people's sanity in all honesty. I was a supercar detailer. People would bring in wraiths, continental GTs, Aventadors, P1S, anything you could think of and just leave it in the lot for us to clean. Granted, we did a freaking good job on cleaning the cars to be on showroom level, but these cleans would cost around £4,000 each for a fairly basic one. Before I worked there apparently a guy dropped off his Koenigsegg Agera for a £12,000 full detail and PPE wrap. He left the keys to this 2.1 million dollar car in the wheel well in the parking lot before they were open and sent an email telling them what he wanted. We made £10 an hour. 12k to them is like 1.20 for us. One of my first jobs was selling high end jewelry. The engagement rings made sense you wear it every day. Still not how I would spend my money, but if you're spending on something frivolous let it be a wedding ring or a watch you'll get a lot of use out of. But the part that turned my stomach? People who would buy a $15,000 diamond necklace for a one-off event then complain they needed new earrings to go with it. There should be some kind of jewelry rental place for things like that. Bloody well accomplished. I'm not on commission. But it's a small single store, so that money is going to keep us solvent and keep my salary paid. Plus I like my boss and co-workers. When a customer comes in who has the ability and inclination to spend lots of money, we all work together to help her do just that. We'll make her so pleased with her gifts and the supplies and decor for her big party. She'll be back soon for more. And when someone comes in who doesn't have a lot of money, I'll help her find something she can afford that looks good enough to present as a hostess gift to the first customer. As for me, I don't have to own the stuff. I get to live with it all day. I worked in a high-end women's swimwear store for a summer. 
I was making $8.50 HR, doing part time. People would come in and spend more money than I made in my entire time working there. It was surreal. I remember talking to friends about my shifts and just being in awe about the fact that people would, and could, so easily drop $600 in one store, on 4 things, and be totally fine with that, realizing that I would never be able to afford the things I was selling, even with my discount, was interesting. Overall, it was an alright place to work, I had a lot of freedom so I didn't mind it so much, but man, I definitely envied some of those ladies. I've rang up sales between 14 and 20k before. It's always a bit of a shock and something you think about for a bit but really it's just a number. You get to a point where you don't even have the man what if I had that money scenario. It actually has wrapped around ANF become relatively funny again though. Calmly and firmly reading off alright so your total today is $14,722.86. Give a delivery on the number so solid that the person behind in line does a double take at the price. I used to work as a journalist, and writing about real estate deals after a while feels like writing about monopoly money. There would be projects worth multiple dozens of my monthly salary. I wouldn't think they would be very newsworthy because they weren't very broadly significant. And then, I would finish work and return to my hovel. I work for a high-end restaurant group in my city, organizing large functions. I work part-time so I make less in one year than some people spend on one dinner or party especially the weddings. I always remind myself how much money that actually is when I'm quoting people. Used to work at a law firm. Some of the invoices we'd send out were worth more than my salary. It made me incredibly sad that I could see how much we billed but I was getting paid crap. Ouch, that's gotta suck, being able to see the boss's next Ferrari in the back of your mind, right beside the little bag of ramen noodles that represents your cut of that money. I worked at Nordstrom for years, and you kinda get numb to it, you look at it as more commission for you, so it's a win for everyone, just cross your fingers it doesn't get returned. I know this isn't a direct answer for the question but I work for a dog daycare in the city next to mine. Old people with money. There are packages available when it comes to boarding and daycare for the dogs. Some guy just bought a package the other day along with some other stuff and he spent 7k in that one purchase. As a poor high schooler, it's crazy to me and I wonder if I'll ever work hard enough to spend $7,000 on my husky. Every year at my wife's dog daycare facility on Black Friday through Christmas they offer 10 lifetime packages for 10k. Every year they sell out. People will change their own spending habits to accommodate for pets. It's insane. I didn't work at a luxury store, but at Macy's. But I remember one time this lady came and dropped my whole month's rent on free people and true religion jeans. She didn't seem bothered but I was literally shocked. It was a surreal feeling. That day I also watched loss prevention and the cops have to talk some crazy tweaker into giving them the watches he hid in his butt. So both sides of the spectrum I suppose. I saw the cops arrest a lady who had hidden like 5 cabinet knobs in her vagina. They were maybe $5 each. And that's being generous. They got stuck and they had to call an ambulance for her. It was pretty crazy. One of the cops joked yeah. You're probably not going to want these back. My circumstances are slightly different, but I often feel like litigation is high-end retail because at the end of it all, you're working for the client. Some of these people have multi-million tax bills that they haven't paid. They've dripped tens of thousands over the years for different financial planners only to wind up getting too greedy, too aggressive, or they've gotten too lazy and chosen not to follow that advice closely enough. Unlike the other posters who highlight the inconsequential attitude to dropping huge wads of cash, these guys care. In my experience, they are all really scared and want this addressed as quickly as possible. They don't always have the cash on hand to pay the bill, but they don't want the interest to start accumulating on their debt either. The only time they're willing to shell out hundreds of thousands of dollars is when they're invariably given a settlement offer and they can make the chokehold of the government go away once and for all. At that point, they are excited to pay up for my services. After all, I've just saved them a ton of money, but most importantly, I've ended things for them. The public underestimates how crappy going to court can be. It's a really awful experience to be there as party to a case. 
I have fun, but that's because it's my job and I enjoy it. In terms of how I feel faced with these sums of money I'll never have for myself, it's twofold. On the one hand, I'm disillusioned because I start to lose my sense of objective reality and money. Dealing with at least 6 figure amounts in every case I see. I forget just how much that is. Oh, this is only a case worth 50k. Probably not even worth looking at it. Luckily, my partner is really grounded. And we make conscious efforts to resituate our normal so that it doesn't impact our spending. Let me tell you, it's really hard not to drop $300 on something completely frivolous after winning a six-figure case. But that's not a healthy habit to develop for my own finances. On the other hand, there is a twinge of jealousy. Some of these people haven't really done anything to earn this money. They just got lucky getting the right parents. And the money at stake is more than I'll ever make in a lifetime. But this feeling goes away pretty quickly. It's important to recognize that I'm lucky too. I've had lots of opportunity to be where I am. And I certainly make enough to provide for my family. Lusting after a bigger yacht isn't a healthy place to be. And I never want to fall into that trap. It just takes a lot of mindfulness to avoid it. It's reasons like this that most family wealth doesn't make it past the third generation. Not being there to actually make it or having $400 dollar dinners being normal growing up puts it in a normal way of life even if you can't afford it. Not retail, but I work in the transportation field and it can get quite depressing honestly. Going and making deliveries to people with the cost of the product being more than 5 times what I make in a year and just seeing how successful they are and where I am in my life yeah, it brings me down from time to time. I had a stint in a high-end department store for a few months, but not in the clothes or jewelry department where I guess they see those purchases every couple of clients. I was in the kitchen table where Depp but I remember a couple and some family members staff show for security guys spending hours on our floor. They already had quite a lot of bags and their purchases were being sent to the concierge, so that you can pick everything at once and not have to collect your bags at every floor or department. And I was thinking about the sheer volume of stuff. So much. I hope they were outfitting a brand new and empty apartment otherwise it's rich order central. I think I remember they were quite polite and pleasant anyway. My mother used to work in Geneva airport some 15-20 years ago. And she sometimes would sell watches that could cover our rent for the year to random late night flights. She never really let it get to her head, but she'd often mention how these people just don't seem to see numbers the same way lower tier salary people do. For them it's often a hard choice between picking a watch that costs 150k or another that costs 175k not because of the tag, but because they don't know if the preferred the diamonds on the first one or the leather inlay of the watch face of the other. She recently had a client, she switched to tour guide for, very private Russian clients. The kind you're not officially allowed to mention basically, buy a watch that was worth over a mil, and to him it was just a souvenir from my trip basically. She told me that it hurt her in a way, not because of the money but the total indifference of the client towards an item that cost more than her and I combined make yearly. And to him it was just a souvenir from my trip basically, and a great way to transport a million over the border without declaring it to customs. I think this answers the spirit of the question. I used to be a table games dealer at a casino in Las Vegas. Some dealers were kind of scared to deal with larger amounts of money. I never really understood that, it would just freak them out and they'd kinda freeze up. And I'm not even talking about huge amounts of money, below 4 figure bets. One dealer was even anxious about $500 bets. On one of my first days at a new place, my boss tried pulling me off my table because a big player was going to play there. It was a fairly low stakes place anyway, because she was worried I wasn't ready to deal with someone betting $500 to $1k. I was like bruh, it's just money and the payouts are the same. Ratio. Just bigger. I didn't really care if players won or lost. Although I'd obviously rather them win than lose. But I'm not going to be torn if someone wins or loses a lot. Part of the game. Some dealers wanted players to lose. For some reason. Because they want the company to do well. Not that there's a problem with wanting your employer to do well. But at the end of the day, the casino ain't going broke if they lose 5 or 6 figures to someone in a day. And chances are, that guy is down 10x that amount lifetime anyway. And if the casino won that amount, again, it's going to make a pretty small bump in their profits. 
I always assumed dealers wanted players to win so they'd get bigger tips. I didn't work in a high-end store exactly, it was more of a pricey, slightly fancy craft store. Once had a man come in with his family who spent about £3,000 in one transaction. Doesn't sound like too much considering some stores sell one bag for that much, but this guy spent £700 on tissue paper alone and that was how much I earned a month working part-time then. I remember thinking that it was crazy that that pile of paper was worth a month of my time. No hate though, you got the money you may as well spend it keeps me in the job. I used to underwrite credit cards for some of the richest people in the UK. Spending 200-300k a month was pretty standard. At first I found it freaking insane and then it became standard for a request to spend 50k on a bed. Or 30k on bed linen. Want a 100k watch? Sure, no problem. The only time I felt like I was missing out was when some guy who had clearly made enough money to retire early, wanted to put through 50k or so to take his wife through Spain. That's what they did and presumably still do. Just travel the world together getting to experience cool stuff. It also made me realize how much wealth there really is in the world that a lot of us aren't aware of. People take the pee out of things like goop. I think it's stupid too. But there is a big market for spunking thousands like it's nothing. Not only do people have all that wealth, they literally can't spend it fast enough. Which is nuts. Think of all the dang charity work a person could do, but I'm a nerd like that. I see people buying million dollar motorhomes all the time. I don't even think I could buy a new set of tires for it with my annual salary. I worked at a high end destination jewelry store. It was its own place not attached to other stores. From 0308. During Christmas season. It wasn't unheard of to have million dollar days where we'd gross 1 million dollars in sales in a day. For perspective, a typical mall jewelry store makes about 2 million dollars a year. With that said, the most amount I've ever handled from a customer was a 200 dollar K check. The most amount of cash from a customer was 60 thousand dollars in 100 dollars S. I had to count it 3 times by hand because we didn't have any bill counting machine. The most amount of merchandise I've handled was a tray of diamonds graded and in vials for selling, for about $450 K. It wasn't a high-end retail store, but I used to work at a hallmark in a city where a bunch of rich old folks lived. Keepsake ornaments. Some people go absolutely nuts over them, meticulously planning shopping lists, knowing the dates of each release. There are 4 events each year dedicated to these ornaments, literally having a meltdown if one is sold out, the works. It was not uncommon for people to drop over 1 dollar k on freaking Christmas ornaments. One lady I knew who was a particularly avid collector bragged that she keeps 14 Christmas trees in her house year round to display her hallmark ornaments. Of all the nonsense in this thread, this one is too much for me, freaking ornaments. I work at a butcher shop and while people aren't spending my yearly salary on meat, some people come in and drop 500 on some wajai or other higher end cuts for a single dinner, which is like 2 months worth of food for me. I have had a weird experience with this mindset. I grew up in the states, poor, like trailer park and free school lunch life. Got educated, moved abroad. I work for American wages in a third world country. By American standards it's not much. With my family size I would be on welfare. But here it's like making 300k a year. I can blow an office worker's monthly salary on a single dinner. I have been working full time since I was 16 and I'm never going to forget being in service jobs. ETC so I always tip like crazy and I'm polite and friendly as possible. But I still get many reactions from ranging from this idiot is terrible with money to good for you to just seething anger or jealousy. I am not overspending for my budget, but the idea that a month's salary could be play money is not recognized. I feel like I understand the wealthy better and honestly still processing how I feel about that. Where would this be? If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.